Hello again. I often hear people talking about internal systems and soft systems as if they were the same concept. But they are not. Let's start by defining what internal means. In fact, let's start by defining what internal does not mean. It's not mystical. It's not esoteric. It's not about using your chi instead of your muscles. It simply means using your core muscles as your main source of power instead of the muscles of the chest, shoulders and arms. Generating power in the core is referred to as internal because it's not evident to the casual observer. Why is it not evident? Well, a stable structure is an efficient structure and core stability makes all movement more efficient. So when you harness the core, you need less effort in the limbs to achieve the result you need. When your core is stable, strong and crucially coordinated with your movement, you need less rigidity in the arms when intercepting a punch, for example. Internal systems practice exercises that refine and strengthen your overall structure, but also train you to transfer the explosive kinetic energy generated by the huge muscle mass in the core to the limbs. You may have heard of such exercises referred to as Jing Gong. This transfer of kinetic energy is primarily via the tendons and connective tissue, allowing the energy to ripple out from the core to whichever limb or limbs will deliver that force to the target. Of course, muscles are activated along that power chain, including muscles in the chest, shoulders and arms, if you're striking with the hand. But because those muscles are activated as a means of keeping the kinetic energy moving along the chain rather than originating the, the energy, you won't see much tension in the limbs. And they might even appear completely relaxed, which is just an illusion because there will always be some tension. Thus, the power generation is less evident. It's also less evident because your clothes cover your core. So, as I've said in a previous video, internal does not mean not using muscle. In fact, you're using a huge amount of muscle, but those muscles are deep inside you and not obvious to the casual observer. Unless you actually hit something, of course. So, the more you take advantage of the core muscles, the less obvious your power is and therefore the more internal. Conversely, if you do not train to harness the core, the more you rely on the muscles of the chest, shoulders and arms to generate power, the more obvious your power is and therefore more external. Since internal power generation allows you to keep your arms relatively relaxed, it can be very hard for your opponent to read you when they cross hands with you. At the same time, it makes it easier for you to read them. That is the subtlety that internal training allows. Broadly speaking, I would say there are two types of internal system. The first type has specific solo exercises that don't just develop core strength, but also coordinate that strength with limb movement to train you to deliver power to the target without excess tension. In Chinese martial arts, such exercises fall within the realm of Qi Gong, and in particular, Jing Gong. 
an example of this type is Utsu Chuen, as it was taught by the late Chi Kim Tong. The big advantage is that the student can build strength and power delivery while training alone. The big disadvantage is that unless the student actually works with a partner in a non-cooperative drill and sparring, the student can fool themselves into thinking that they can actually fight when all they're good at is exercises. This is a big problem in Chinese martial arts today, as I see it. The second type does not, as far as I'm aware, have such solo exercises. Rather, the student is introduced to partner work, particularly some form of sparring or technique drilling against a resisting opponent. In working with a more experienced partner, the student must intuit that brute force will not serve them well. So they have to start using core strength to succeed. An example of this is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. The big advantage of this is that the student actually learns to apply their skill against resisting opponents. The big disadvantage, which is a perception of mine and not necessarily a fact, is that I imagine most students never do learn to use their core since they're not given specific exercises to do so. And they quit in frustration at always being beaten by those who do learn to use their core. If you practice BJJ and you disagree, I'd be very happy to hear from you. Does this mean there is no tension in the upper torso and arms when you generate power internally? Of course not. The very act of holding your hands in a guard position requires muscular tension. And delivering the power from your core to the target requires movement of the arms and hands and therefore muscular contraction. Conversely, generating external force also requires muscular contraction of the core, since core stability enables all other movement. The point is that an internal system maximizes power generation in the core, while an external system maximizes power generation in the limbs. I'm not aware of any system that's 100% internal or 100% external, but systems can tend to one end of the spectrum or the other. Within Utsu Chuen itself, there are schools that tend more towards the external, from what I can see, even though I've been taught it as an internal system. And within the same school, individuals can also tend towards one end of the spectrum or the other. In terms of the kinetic energy delivered into a target, it makes no difference to the target whether that energy was generated internally or externally. A broken jaw is a broken jaw after all. So, Internal power generation is not more effective. You can argue that it's more efficient at the precise moment of action. But you can also argue that it's less efficient if you want to learn quickly because it takes longer to learn. It takes longer to learn because it's subtle. It requires learning specific breathing techniques manipulation of the core muscles, elimination of redundant tension, developing supple fascia. But if you're built like Hapfer Julius Björnsson, why would you practice an internal martial art? 
So I'm not arguing that internal is better than external. I'm simply explaining what internal means. I should make the point that because internal power is not obvious, unless you know what to look for, many charlatans who have no power at all claim that their power cannot be seen because it's internal. Unfortunately, Chinese martial arts is riddled with such fakers, and you can see a lot of them on the internet demonstrating against compliant partners and students. On the other hand, unless you have been trained in an internal system and you know what to look for, you might dismiss a demonstration by a genuine master of an internal art. The only way to be sure is to have them demonstrate it on you. As you can see, I've defined internal without referring to softness because they are not the same concept. The term internal refers only to how you generate power. It does not refer to how you apply that power. Softness is about how you apply kinetic energy to a target. To explain how I see this, I use the following analogies. Imagine you're walking through a house in the dark and someone has left a door open. You walk right into the edge of that door and break your teeth. It's shocking, percussive, painful. You weren't expecting it, but you understand what has happened. If your technique has that kind of effect on your opponent, it's a hard technique, regardless of whether you generated that force internally or externally. Imagine again that you're walking through that house in the dark. There's a step down that you were not expecting. You're thrown off balance. <coughs> it's shocking, but it's not percussive. It's not painful. Yet for that instant, you are not in control. And you may not understand what's just happened. You may regain control, or you may continue to fall and break your ankle. Or you may fall into that door and break your teeth. <laughs> if your technique has that kind of effect on your opponent, it is a soft technique. It's subtle and it's hard to read. To sense, read and counter a soft technique, your own soft skill must be at least as good as your opponent's. Practitioners of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu will understand exactly what I mean. Soft or hard has nothing to do with whether your hand is open or in a fist. You can apply a soft technique with a closed fist and a hard technique with an open hand. Soft techniques do require a subtlety that internal systems develop. You cannot be soft if your shoulders and arms are tense. Therefore, I would say it's very unlikely for force generated externally to deliver soft technique. However, you can deliver a hard technique by applying force generated internally. So while I would say external systems almost always apply hard techniques, internal systems can apply hard or soft techniques to achieve the desired result. In fact, it's often a good idea to apply a soft technique to take your opponent off balance and immediately follow with a hard technique to finish them. As if they missed that step in the dark house, twisted their ankle and then fell into the door.
Of course, the subtlety and skill to deliver soft technique and to flow between soft and hard cannot come from the conscious mind. It must happen without thought and that can only come through years of training. To develop the core, to eliminate unnecessary tension, to breathe correctly, to build the neural pathways that will make your movements automatic. To maximize your ability to apply soft technique, you really need to develop internal power generation. Because of this close connection between the two, people often conflate them. But internal and soft are not the same concept. Thanks for watching.